my name is Peter Glor. I'm a research scientist at the Center for Collective Intelligence and I have been studying social networks um, almost since the web existed, actually before the web existed, when I came as a postdoc uh, over 20 years ago. But for the last 10 years, I really focused uh, on initially email-based networks because um, what I'm stu really studying is innovation and innovation is something that is not done in isolation but I'm a firm believer in collaborative innovation and so that's what I have been studying through the lens of social networks. Twelve years ago I started collecting email archives and one of the first email archives was the one from the World Wide Web Consortium this um, was a group which I knew quite well because um, I was a postdoc in the Advanced Networking Architecture Group right when Tim Berners-Lee, the creator of the World Wide Web, joined MIT. And so I could compare the pattern that we got from looking at those electronic mailing list email um, networks with the real world networks. And what really dawned on me there was this crucial role that what I call the coins, the collaborative innovation networks play. And the process is always the same. You have a very creative person and this person is extremely intrinsically motivated and they are on a mission and they want to change the world in one particular way and what they um, succeed in is recruiting this small group of like-minded souls and normally this is a very small group, it's just like 3 to 12 people that together turn this initially crazy vision into a first prototype and then they recruit a larger group and that's what I call the collaborative learning network and in my own work, um, looking at the web, this was the World Wide Web Consortium which helped to carry the idea into the rest of the world and this learning network is the incubator for the coin, it helps to develop the idea further, it helps to recruit additional members to the coin and in the end, as in the case of the World Wide Web, they change the world. I would say they exist in spite of the typical structure of an organization. They are skunk works, they are grassroots and even the web at MIT it was initially just Tim's crazy idea and he was um, embedding himself into an existing structure at LCS, as it was called at that time. And obviously open source, Linux, Wikipedia, they are prime examples. But basically any startup works like that. And even if you look at large organizations, for example, the way how the concept of e-business was created within IBM, that was a skunkworks operation too. And I have another example from my own uh, career. Um, after having been a postdoc at MIT, I was a manager with UBS, the big bank, for a couple of years. And my role was data warehousing, but knowing um, the coolness of the web, I really wanted to introduce, the, and it, in the end it turned out to be one of the first intranets at UBS, and that was a skunk works too. And I wasn't really allowed to do it officially. I had to do serious stuff like Oracle databases. But um, I uh, hired two interns from MIT and um, they built that thing uh, as part of their internship. And so it, uh, in the end it worked out very nicely also. The rules of the coins which are that if you have a crazy idea, you need to get your members of the coin to really buy into this idea. They need to believe that they have come up with this idea. And this is hard. For the inventor, this is hard. He's so proud of his idea, but he needs to make the entire group own that idea. And if we look at the famous examples of today, the World Wide Web, Linux, Wikipedia, we see those founders, but they are leaders in a very different sense. They are certainly leaders, but what they have is the trust, the trust of their community and the, they don't have any real power. They can be removed at an instant, but because the community believes that they are the best to shepherd this project further, it works very well. Coins go through phases or through cycles, and you have, it's like this 
there's this famous uh, group, Norming, Storming, Forming, Performing, uh, The Four Faces by Tuckman. And in coins, you have this creative phase, the storming phase when new ideas come. And we can see that also in open source projects, for example, Apache, the web server, um, it has gone through an entire series of leaders because they didn't have the right personalities for later phases in the projects because at some point you really need to make them stick and you need the more initially you need the person with the crazy ideas and then you need the salesperson and then you need the manager the one <coughs> that is capable of running a big organization and sometimes you have people and it seems Linus Torvalds is a little bit like that that have this personality of combining all four of them in some sense but more often the initially creative person and <coughs> the key that they have to be is collaborative. If they know they are the greatest and the best and they show that all the time it doesn't work. They need to embrace others as equals. Coins in companies, this is a great way for disruptive innovation. And over the last 12 years since this concept of the coins has been developed, they have probably worked with close to 100 companies and sometimes I get kicked out right away because a company says this is not for me because if you want to have step-by-step -step gradual innovation you don't need a coin then you can just follow a very well-ordered process coins are disruptive they destroy old things by creating new ones and in that sense it's like Eric von Hippel's lead user innovation where because it comes from the outside the ideas come from the outside the potential is huge, but the risk is huge too.